JavaScript enabled add-ons. They're easy to install, they're powerful, they're a game changer. But we're gonna cover some fundamentals you should know before you integrate these into your solutions. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. In this video, we're gonna use the timer add-on because it's basic and simple. However, the video is gonna go in depth. With that said, let's dig right in. We'll cover installation. It is drag and drop, but we'll look at when it brings it in and what it brings in. We'll look at the configurator. This is how you connect the add-on to your FileMaker fields. Every add-on comes with sample data, but you shouldn't use the sample data table in your solution. And instances versus copies. One of the great benefits of an add-on is you can reuse the code. We'll look at uninstalling. It's not, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a few caveats you should be aware of. And then the upgrading of add-ons, which, spoiler alert, there isn't an upgrade path, so we need to plan on uninstalling and reinstalling when new versions of an add-on come out. I've just created a new database, and it loaded up its initial table, and that's all that's in this database. Now I'll go into layout mode, and I go to add-ons, and if this panel isn't showing, you can click up here. Now it's this plus sign down here where we're going to install these add-ons. So we hit plus, notice the blue highlight tells us that these are JavaScript. So we have had add-ons since version 16. They just have been accessible through a much less user-friendly interface. Notice over here on the right, we have a description, we have a view of what it's gonna look like, it tells us who made it. But here we have um, kind of a rundown of what this is gonna do. It's gonna add these two tables, it's gonna add these layouts, and it's gonna add these scripts. Now this gives you an opportunity to look at the naming conventions because if there is a namespace conflict, you should change the name of your scripts or your layouts or your tables because a lot of times these need their namespace to work correctly. We're gonna select choose. And at this point, the timer is now installed in our solution. So if we go into our managed database, we can see that it added two tables. This is the um, information needed to make the add-on work. And we also got our sample data. If we look at our scripts, in particular, timer has a fluke where it comes in open. So if you hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a Windows and click this first turn style, it will close all of the folders underneath of it. Private, you shouldn't mess with. Public are scripts that you can call or interact with. Also, if we go into custom functions, we see that two custom functions were added. We don't need to go into great detail about these. Um, just know that they got added. Now, it is not recommended that you install an add-on in a production environment and certainly not on a file that you don't have a backup of. In fact, it's recommended that you work with the add-ons in a standalone file until you're fully aware of what they do. And even then, it's not a bad idea to go to tools and make a database design report before you add in the add-on. Store it in XML, and that'll give you the ability to compare it should something go wrong. Now we can click on the timer and drag it onto our layout, and this will create an instance of the timer in this layout. Now if we go into browse mode and we hit start, we can see that it works. But this drag and drop simply set this up so that you can see it work. Right now this JavaScript is self-contained. It needs to be linked up to the sample data. Now we could go into the configurator and installation is our current layout. And if we click on this, we don't, we don't see any fields. That's because they need to be present on the layout that we're selecting up here. Now we could close out of this, go into layout mode and change our layout setup so that this references timer sample data. And then we could simply add those fields right here. Now when we go into our timer configurator and we're on the layout installation, we can select the fields because they're located on our layout. And now we can hit save. And now it works as expected. We can make new records. We can even turn a timer on, go to the next record, turn that timer on, go to the previous record, 
and that timer's still been running. Now that this is working with our timer sample data table, let's talk about why we shouldn't use that table. Because these are bundled together as an add-on, and because our current upgrade path for an add-on right now is to uninstall that add-on and then install a new version, if you were to uninstall this, it would take your data with it. And then at that time, you would need to make a copy and rewire it. So one thing you can do, if you do want to use the timer sample data table, simply copy it and paste it, and then set everything up on this copy. It is worth noting that even if you change the name of this timer sample data table, it's still going to be removed. It knows it by an ID. I'm just going to wire this up in turbo speed to use our data table instead of the one that came with the add-on. What if we wanted to have two timers on this record? Maybe different tasks are happening at the same time. We could grab the timer and drag a second one on, and this would be a separate instance of the same code. If you notice here, there's add-on UUID. And what this is, is the ID of this instance. It's the ID of this group. And there are three different elements that are referencing this ID. One is this web viewer. If we open up the tab here, it's referenced here in its name. As you can see, it's referenced in the calculation. It is also referenced in this button for the configurator in the script parameter. This value is passed around in the scripts and the functions so that FileMaker knows what instance of this add-on is being interacted with. Now, if we manage our database and we select our fields that are referenced in the configurator and we hit duplicate, we now have copies. I want to give you a tip here. Notice that when I use the duplicate button, it will append copy to the end of my field. It also makes an exact copy of the field. It duplicates it. Another way to do this is if you select all the fields in the configurator and you copy and you paste, rather than appending copy, it increments it. But also if we notice the calculation field, this now references any field that was in that set that got copied. So that can help prevent some bugs. A unique instance only affects the layout objects in the group. When we work with the FileMaker data, we still need to ensure that it works the way it's expected. And then I'll go in and modify configurator settings. And I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to change this to zero just to change the color so we know the difference between the instances. And then I can start this one. Wait a few seconds, start this one. And we have two separate instances of the timer. Now, Let's compare this with copy. I go into layout mode and I duplicate my layout. So now I have installation copy. I go into browse mode and I hit start. And I move over to installation. I'm still at 10. And I start this and I move back over to installation copy. Then they're both running. So in layout mode, I could copy this and paste it somewhere else in my layout. And as long as I'm copying and pasting, it is a copy. And when I drag it from the installer again, it creates a new UUID and it creates a new instance. To uninstall the timer, we can go into edit layout mode and we can click on the timer and we can say uninstall add-on. And you get a dialog box, which says permanently delete all tables, fields, and record data used by this add-on. And this is the warning I've been telling you throughout the video. If we use the sample data table, that is considered the record data that came in with the add-on. So when we click uninstall, it's going to remove the table, the fields, the record data. In the first instance, we're going to leave this clicked and we're going to click uninstall and we're going to see what is left. Now, if we go in and we look at our tables, we see that we kept our actual data. Our relationship graph is the things that we made. The scripts are gone. Our custom functions are gone. Any layouts created by the add-on are gone. And because they're gone, we can now click on the timer 
and choose it. And when we go and look, we'll see that they came back in and things are fine. Now let's contradict this with, we're gonna uninstall the timer and we're gonna uncheck this box. So we want it to leave the tables and the fields and the record data. So when we uninstall the add-on, if we go to manage custom functions, they are gone. We go to manage layouts, the layouts are gone. Scripts are gone. But if we look at our schema, the instances are still here. The tables are still here. And if we decide we want to put this back in, we've got duplicates. Now, what happens when we un try to uninstall the duplicates? Well, it's aware of the copies or the twos because it knows them by uh, some kind of grouping ID. But it's not going to integrate with our pre-existing calculations and formulas and other things that we might have created. Now, if we had changed the names of these and we had reinstalled, then we would see that they did come in proper and things probably would work. If you find yourself trying to dissect an add-on, this is one of the reasons things are not hard-coded. They will try to find the name of an item. To act upon it. The need to uninstall at some point needs to be taken into consideration for any person using an add-on. And the reason is there currently isn't an upgrade path for an add-on. Currently you would need to uninstall the add-on and then install a new version. So it's important to plan ahead. Thanks for joining. I hope you learned a few things about JavaScript enabled add-ons. And I hope some of this information will help you avoid some speed bumps. Remember that a like on this video is a way of letting me know this is the content that you find valuable. And if you do find it valuable, you can expand the description below and there's a link to our online university. We have a lot of great courses. Also, I'll be producing a video for each JavaScript enabled add-on. So if you'd like to be notified when those come out, be sure to subscribe to the channel and you can click the bell to get notifications. So until next time.